Um, as you've seen so far, we do have a, a healthy number of articles. It's a manageable number. Um, so my job is to help us get through those as quickly and efficiently as possible, but to make sure anyone that wants to be heard can be heard. So um, for tonight's meeting, we are going to ask that if you do wish to speak, if you can come down to the mics on either side. Uh, and when you do get to the mic and it's your turn, if you can just state your name and your street that you're living on. Um, and we are, we're anxious to hear what you have to say. So um, when you came in, everyone was handed the packet. And the packet is really helpful for this evening to kind of go through what we're going through. The first section is the bylaws. Uh, town meeting is run by uh, a combination of our town's bylaws and a publication called Town Meeting Time. So. It's also my job to make sure we kind of stay within those rules. Some of them are a bit foreign, so if there's a question on process or procedure, just feel free to raise your hand or come down to the mic and I can try to explain uh, what, what's happening and, and help you out. Um, the select board puts forth the warrant, so that is the legal document that puts anyone on notice on what will be discussed tonight. And then the actual motions are what you'll be voting on. So the warrants are more general. The motions are specifically what the votes will be on this evening. So. While well, you can read along in the packet, the motions will be what you want to see, and they will be up on the, uh, the screen as well. So, um, In terms of what will happen, the motion will be made, it will be seconded. At that point, uh, we'll take any recommendations from committees, and at that point, uh, you would be able to ask any questions or have your input at that point. So, um, If you wish to amend any of the motions, we do require, and our bylaws require, that those motions to amend be made in writing, so we have paper down here if that's necessary. Um, again, when you hear about democracy, th this is it. So um, this is your chance, our chance to, to legislate on behalf of the town. The select board has put forth the, these warrant articles, but ultimately it's your vote that controls and it's your voice that should be heard. So even if it's uh, not pretty, we'd love to hear from you and, and, and have the town be able to deliberate with your input. So. Uh, the ballot is complete. We have 106 votes uh, for Jen Wallace to be our acting clerk, and we have two blank ballots. So at this point, Jen will be the acting clerk for the purposes of this meeting. Thank you, Jen. Um, again, uh, this town has a, a great history of being respectful of one another when you speak, but really, um, Anything that you are going to say should come from the mic. So if there are comments that you're itching to make, uh, please keep those to yourself unless you come to the mic and make them to the whole form. And again, in terms of process, any questions or comments are meant to be directed back to me as the moderator and not any of the select board or any other speakers. So uh, if we can just respect that as well. And with that, let's get started. So I'd like to start with the introduction of the head table. I'll start with myself. My name is Dan Graves. I'm the town moderator. And to my right, Lisa Mead, town council. Casey Warren, Town Administrator. Brenda Hill, Town Accountant. Jen Wallace, Assistant Town Clerk. Dave Wolf from Select Board. Trevor McDaniel, Select Board. Carolyn Ness, Select Board. Allison Vandervelden, Finance Committee. Julie Chalfant, Finance Committee. John Petrarch, Finance Committee. Skip Olmstead, Finance Committee. Beth Brown, Finance Committee. John Pereski, Finance Committee and Personnel Board. James Cambius, Finance Committee and Library Trustee. Um, as has been the tradition at all meetings, uh, we do start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you're comfortable, if you could please rise and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I do have two initial moderator motions. Uh, my first motion, I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, the moderator briefly summarize the content of the article to be considered and further that unless objection is raised, the reading of detailed <coughs> motions be waived where well, the article is printed can and the opinion of the moderator be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Second. Um, this is just a procedural motion that, again, is meant to expedite things so uh, I can summarize the motion or explain things as it becomes necessary. Are there any questions on that? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. I move that the following people be allowed to address the audience during the town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, town council. Brenda Hill, town accountant. Casey Warren, town administrator. 
Darius Modesto, Superintendent, Frontier Regional Union 38 Schools. Shelly Pareda, Director of Business Administration, Frontier Regional Union 38 Schools. Tina Jemme, Principal, Deerfield Elementary. Richard Martin, Superintendent, Franklin County Technical School. And Russell Cobras, Business Manager, Franklin County Technical School. Second. Again, uh, in our town meeting, uh, non-voters are not allowed to speak without permission from the body. So. This is to allow individuals that may have um, input in some of our motions this evening to allow them to speak. Any questions? All those in favor, if you can raise your green card. Opposed? The motion carries. Um, some of you may remember that last year we tried a consent agenda. And the concept of the consent agenda is allow us to kind of crunch together several matters into a single vote. Um, it's designed to be what we would call non-controversial matters, more routine matters. Um, but if there is something in the consent that you do have uh, a wish to have some input on, if you can just state hold as Mr. Wolfram reads that particular letter and we'll come back to it before the vote. So with that, Mr. Wolfram. I move the town approve Article 1 as set forth in the warrant on the following matters of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Second. Mr. Wolfram, if you could just briefly summarize. This is a uh, motion to uh, carry on the, a lot of the normal business of the town, establishing the uh, uh, pay for this, uh, the moderator the select board. Uh, we also, uh, at this time, gratefully uh, acknowledge the gifts from our uh, People of Gifford Academy of 133,000, Eagle Brook of 26,000, Bement School of 10,000, and Woman Hill of $4,327. And the monetary pledges towards the replacement of the Deerfield Elementary roof completed in 2016, paid over a five to 10 year period. Deerfield Academy has uh, contributed 105,000, Eagle Brook 75,000, Historic Deerfield 25,000, and Bement School 20. Um, pledges received in the last 12 months is Deerfield Academy, 21,000, Eagle Brook, 7,500, Historic Deerfield, 5,000, Vermont School, 2,000. Uh, monetary donations towards a resource officer in the past 12 months, Deerfield Academy, 30,000. Monetary donation towards replacement of the sewer pipes, Deerfield Academy, 270,000. Monetary donation towards July 21, one storm damage on Greenfield Road, Deerfield Academy, 5,000. Monetary donation towards South County EMS operations, Deerfield Academy, $700. And we would also like to gratefully acknowledge countless non-monetary gifts made by all the nonprofit partners in the town during the last uh, 12 months. Uh, with the library, uh, Dickinson Library, uh, Tilton Library for library use is 85%. So that's $2,303. Uh, $2, Frontier Regional School for library use, 15%. $406, which is a total of $2,709. Acceptance of gifts authorizes the select board to apply for, accept, and uh, expend for specific purposes any monies provided by any federal and state grants or programs which may be awarded to the town. Uh, authorize, uh, F is uh, authorize the select board in accordance with uh, general law, chapter 30B, section 12, uh, paragraph B, to negotiate and enter into contracts with vendors as they deem necessary or beneficial for the term of no more than five years. Assessors con contract authority authorize the Board of Assessors in accordance with the uh, General Laws Chapter 30B, Section 12, uh, paragraph B, to negotiate and enter into contracts with vendors as deemed necessary or beneficial for a term of no more than five years. Are there any questions? I'm just going to just make another pause and just mention that uh, the Finance Committee meets uh, with the Select Board and with other various committees and makes their recommendations. So they meet frequently and put a lot of work into uh, the finished product that's here this evening. A lot of times we'll turn to them and ask for the recommendation. This year, uh, their recommendations are printed in the guide, so they will have some input from time to time. But otherwise, you'll note their recommendations when you read them. So <coughs> this was recommended by the Finance Committee. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? The motion carries. Uh, same process again. This is a consent agenda. And uh, Mr. McDaniel. 
So I move the town approve Article 2 to transfer from free cash for the following items A, B, C, and D as set forth in the warrant. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 3, Mr. Wolfram. I move the town approve the maximum amounts of revolving funds established in the Deerfield General Bylaws of Chapter 20, Section 20-3, Departmental Revolving Funds, pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, as referenced in this article. Second. Mr. Wolfram, would you like to briefly explain? These are revolving funds that we use that uh, as money comes in, we expend. Um, so we have the recycling of $20,000 at the uh, transfer station, parks and recreation, with the fees of $75,000 and with the planning board for uh, uh, permits and fees, uh, and that's $25,000. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 4, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town amend Deerfield General Bylaws Chapter 20, Section 20-3, Departmental Revolving Funds to add a new fund. And we are going to pass over this. Second. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just found tonight. out, we just found out that um, the um, Department of Revenue wants us to go through the general fund. So this is not needful. So under our bylaws, even though the uh, select board is asking the motion be passed over, we do need to have a vote on that. So if you are in favor of the article being passed over, which means no action will be taken this evening, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is passed over. Article 5, Ms. Shores Ness? Um, I move the town vote to authorize the Deerfield School Committee to enter into a memorandum of understanding for foster care transportation with the Executive Office of Human and, um, Health and Human Resor uh, Services, Department of e Elementary and Secondary Education, and the Department of Children and Families under the Every Student Succeeds Act. Second. If you this could just briefly summarize. Yep, yes. Five. Thank you. This article authorizes the school committee to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the agencies of the Commonwealth to provide foster care transportation. Any questions? All those in favor of green cards? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 6, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town adopt the classification compensation plan in accordance with the Deerfield General Bylaws, <coughs> Chapter 35, Personnel, Article 3, Classification Compensation Plan for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022, as referenced in this article. Second. Mr. McDaniel, if you want to briefly summarize? So uh, this is a, a compensation plan that we've been working on over the last couple years. Each year we, we come to the town meeting and ask the uh, town meeting to approve our compensation plan for all the employees. And um, this has been a two-year process. Uh, last year we had one plan that we're transitioning everybody over into a new, um, a new grading and step system. Any questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 7, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the amount of $57,842 to fund a fiscal year 2022 shortfall for snow and ice removal expenses. Second. Uh, just a brief summary. This, these expenses incurred for snow and ice removal for this past winter. Even though we had few snowstorms, salt was more expensive, and we did have quite a few events that <coughs> needed to be um, taken care of. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Article 8, um, Mr. Wolfram. I move the moderator read amounts recommended by to be appropriated under this article as referenced in the handout and unless uh, objection is made, each item recommend, 
in the report of the Finance Committee shall be tentatively accepted as appropriated for the purpose stated. If an objection is made for any recommendation, such appropriation shall be taken separately, and the amount therefore, thereof and the matter of the taking of the same shall be determined by vote of the meeting and tentatively accepted. One vote shall be taken appropri appropriating each amount, so, so acceptance as a single appropriation not be exceeded. Second. Second. So the budget line items are in the package that you, were, you received. And what's going to happen is I'm going to read each and every line. Um, and when I do read them, if you have any questions or you'd like to have a discussion on that particular line, if you could just holler out hold. Uh, and once we've completed reading all of them, we'll go back to the holds and take them in order for discussion. Um, the Finance Committee, again, has worked uh, closely on the budget. And they did ask uh, for your consideration and having a brief presentation before we begin that process. So at this point, I'll turn it over to the Finance Committee for a moment. that my slides are up. Okay, I'm Julie Chalfon, I'm chair of the Finance Committee this year. Um, we have a short presentation, as the moderator said, on the budget itself. First line is that this is a balanced budget that meets Prop 2 and a half requirements, which is kind of setting a low bar. That's like saying we were following the law. Um, but the Finance Committee process, we reviewed every line item with the appropriate department head or committee. We invited the select board to join us in that process. There was a lot of discussion back and forth, and many of the budget requests were modified during that discussion. What we re ended up at is a, as I said, balanced budget that in all the individual <coughs> line items are reasonably justified through that discussion. It was by no means unanimous. I think probably every one of us disagreed with at least one of the um, line items, but at the end we came to a, um, a reasonably justified budget. Some highlights of this, this yes, beautiful. Um, it is not a level service budget. There are several budget line items that increase services. There's new hours, new positions, new contracted services. A summary of that is on page nine in the handout that you have right there. We also have a few significant cost increases that were not increased services, but they're just stuff that happened to us, pandemic impacts, loss of a grant, that type of thing. Those are summarized on page 10 in your handout. The remainder of the municipal budget line items provide level services. That doesn't mean it's the same amount of money as last year. There are changes, you know, there's inflation, there's cost of living increases, there's some reductions through savings that people found, there's sometimes fluctuations for things like the number of elections that happen a year, biennial audits that happen <clears throat> this year, whatever. Um, so those are the highlights from the budget. The financial committee, the finance committee analysis, looking at this budget, first point is that we do support this budget and we recommend voting this budget. But there's two main things that we want to make sure everybody understands when we look at this budget. First is that the personnel costs have increased quite a bit. Um, there are more hours, there are new positions, there are increased salaries for the people that we already have. It's important to have reasonable competitive wages for town employees. We want the employees that we have to keep working for us. They are marvelous. And we want, when we have an open position, to be able to actually hire somebody who will come and work for us. So from that perspective, we completely support reasonable competitive wages. What we need to understand is that Personnel costs tend to increase faster than 2.5%. So if you're trying to meet Prop 2.5 guidelines, um, it becomes more challenging the heavier your budget is weighted in personnel. Okay? That's the first point. The second point we wanted to make is actually pretty similar. It's that um, this year we had the luxury of using one-time federal grant funds. The select board voted for those funds to be used to support capital expenditures, which is the perfect thing to spend, spend one-time funds on, right? You spend one-time funds on one-time expenses. But these, some of these things were things that we would normally be looking within our regular town budget to fund. So we have slightly shifted the balance between our routine operating expenses and our capital investments. So next year, when we have capital investments we want to make, we may not have those one-time federal funds to use. So both of those things make this budget a little challenging. It's fine this year, but in future years, we're going to be um, interested in figuring out how to handle that. 
So um, the, we wanted everybody to understand both of those items, but again, the bottom line is that the Finance Committee supports this budget and recommends voting for it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So with that, I'm going to start to read the line items. Moderator, $400. Select board salaries, $16,000. Select board staff salaries, $254,724. Select Board Administrator Expense, $12,250. Finance Committee, $500. Accountant Salary, $78,094. It's a hold on Accountant Salary. Accountant Expense, $17,025. Assessor Salaries, $11,000. Assessor's Administrative Assistant, $69,007. Assessor's Expense, $18,875. Assessor's Quinennial Recertification, $25,000. Treasurer Collector Salaries, $191,507. Treasurer Collector Expense, $37,710. Legal Expense, $75,500. Personnel Board, $750. IT Hardware, $5,000. PEG Access Capital Expense, $4,000. Contracted Services, $271,435. Town Clerk Salary, $34,760. Town Clerk Expense, $25,568. Conservation Commission, $1,000. Open Space Committee, $250. Planning Board, $2,000. Zoning Board of Appeals, $1,000. Agricultural Commission, $100. Energy Committee, $1,000. Town Office Building Maintenance, $85,500. Town Office Expense, $14,000. General Insurance, $63,000. Police Payroll, $994,014. Police Department Expense, $114,300. Police Department Cruiser, $55,000. Inspections Department Payroll, $169,177. Inspection Department Expense, $4,950. Emergency Management, $2,800. Canine Control, $20,954. Deerfield Elementary School, $5,098,948. It's a hold on the elementary school. Frontier Regional School, $4,100,475. Old. Frontier Regional Capital, $1,385. Frontier Regional Transportation, $79,511. Franklin Technical School Assessment, $549,444. General Highway Expense, $304,550. Winter Snow and Ice Removal, $95,000. Street Lighting, $23,000. Transfer Station Expense, $219,900. Test well monitoring and maintenance, $38,000. Board of Health salary, $97,884. There's a hold. Board of Health expense, $13,975. <coughs> Emergency COVID expense, zero. Council on Aging, $500. Senior Center expense, $64,993. Veterans District Assessment, $13,743. Veterans Benefits, $21,000. ADA Coordinator, $250. Tilton Library, $202,983. Summer Swim Program, $6,310. Tri-Town Beach Expense, $27,220. Recreational Department Director Salary, $53,167. Historical Commission, $1,175. Veterans Day Memorial Day Expense, $2,000. Maturing Debt, $457,815. Interest on maturing debt, $196,545. Interest on temporary loans, $5,000. <clears throat> FERCOG core assessment, $45,091. Unfunded sick leave and vacation, $10,000. Franklin County Regional Retirement, $623,521. Workers' compensation, $40,928. Unemployment insurance, $27,000.
Group insurance for the town, $310,939. Group insurance for the school, $635,418. Medicare insurance, $103,386. So with that, we'll start with the holds. And the first hold was on the accountant's salary. Whoever made the hold, if they can come down to the mic. And then the holds on Deerfield and Frontier, if you want to kind of wait, make your way down in the mic just to keep things moving, that's great. Uh, we do. Uh, Robert Greenspan, 50 Eastern Avenue. Um, I appreciate all the hard work you guys do, but I just had a question that just stood out to me. That's a 38% increase, which seems rather large. I, maybe there's a reason for that, but it's a 38% increase, which seems out of line with most of the increases here. Just wondered what, what the logic of that was. Sure, thank you. Mr. McDaniel? So um, the reason we, we changed that increase is because there's an increase in hours and uh, job duties. So um, the accountant has taken on a lot more of the budget finance director kind of of the town and has been running the budget a lot, um, a lot, lot more heavily involved in that and is also increasing the amount of work she's been doing in hours. And um, even at that rate, it's a bargain. It's really hard to find accountants right now and um, we're very, very happy for, to have her working for us. All right, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, at this point, do you, are you satisfied with your question? Would you like to remove the hold or? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I assume you guys have done due diligence. Uh, it's, it just stood out as like. Of course. Uh, now you said that she's, she's taken on responsibilities of another position? So yes. Just, just, position just come right up to the mic so oh, we can all hear you. No, no problem. The position that she, who used to do that, that, that job? Uh, it, well, no one really used to do it. A lot of people would just kind of pull their stuff together, but she's really taken on a lot more of that lead. Mm -hmm. Some stuff was done by previous town um, administrators. Some, some stuff was done by finance committee, okay. select board. She's really, sure. really done an, a fantastic job working our budget together. Yeah. Okay. Count, countless well, hours. Well, thank good you one. So it's much. hard to find. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so the hold is removed on that. Uh, Deerfield Elementary, do you want to take them separately or Deerfield in front? Go ahead. I can, it's a similar issue for both. Sure. First, to the Finance Committee, thank you for the information that's been posted up on Facebook. I think you're doing a great job and I appreciate seeing some of that historical data as to where we're trending. Mm. Thanks for putting the work in. <laughs> My concern on the two education budgets, and I said this before, is the students that are admitted from outside the district, the school choice students. 17% of the student body at Deerfield Elementary is school choice, 28% at Frontier. My understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, state gives us about $5,000 per student. Quick back of the, nap, back of the green card math, uh, it cost about $17,500 to educate a student at Deerfield Elementary, so we're, we, we are on the hook for $12,500 per student times 56 students. It's about $700,000 that we pay to educate students that don't live in the town. When we get into Frontier, and I wasn't able to figure out the true cost of what it costs us to educate a student in Frontier, because I didn't have all the data and I didn't get the reports until this evening when I walked in. I'll make a stab at it. Um, you know, if we, about $10,000 a student maybe after the 5,000 from the state comes in. Um, so 10,000 per student times 173 students, it's a million seven. And that's split between the four districts. So I understand we probably have a part of that. I don't know Deerfield's portion of that. 51%. Okay, I guess 45. So 51% of a million seven another 850 plus thousand dollars. So we're at a million and a half dollars educating students that reside outside of Deerfield. And while I'm very thankful and I appreciate the increased donations from our nonprofit partners at the north end of town, every time properties come off of our tax roll, families move into those houses and they come down to come into Deerfield schools, we have to pay for that and we're not collecting taxes on those properties any longer. 
So there's also an increased burden to the taxpayers to support children who come from homes that are no longer taxed or properties that aren't taxed in the north end of town. So as Julie mentioned, we're up against a two and a half proposition, which is kind of a low bar for us, but we're generous enough to spend this money to educate and take care of people outside of our town. I don't want to be the bad guy, but I think it's something we really need to get on top of and need to figure out because we have needs in this town and you're going to hear more about them as this meeting goes on. All it's going to mean is increased cost to us to pay to educate others. My, my motto has always been, if you want your kids to come to school in this town, purchase a property in this town. Thank you. Thank you. I'll remove my hold. Thank you. Select board want to comment at all? Or? Okay, hold is removed. Uh, the next item uh, was the Board of Health salary. Yes. Uh, yeah, hi. I'm sorry, it's my first meeting. Oh, I no, you're welcome I, to I, it. Welcome. I just looked at this first time. Welcome. Just your name and your street address, too, so we can get to know you. I apologize. Robert Greenspan, 50 Eastern Avenue. Great, thank you. And I just was curious, uh, again, the Board of Health salary has gone up 250%, which seems like a, a, lar a large amount. Maybe we have more people. <coughs> I don't know. I just wanted to kind of... A, Ms. Shoresness, overview of why. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ms. Shoresness, would you like to address yes. that? Um, we're going from a 20-hour position. Dick Kalaszewski is retiring, and um, I'm kind of burned out after <laughs> COVID, so I'm stepping down a little bit, and I have work for free, so there is going to be an increase <laughs> to cover my hours, and um, this, so this in, what this does is go to a 30 two hour position and you have to pay slightly more. We are very lucky to have someone who is willing to work um, for less than what the going rate is in the valley. Um, but it does address the increased <coughs> workload from food trucks like the tree from Treehouse. And um, we are, we adjusted our, our fee schedule to um, cover the additional cost of having a paid person versus, you know, just Dick and I going on a weekend and, you know, inspecting a food truck and then that's it. This is anticipated to be every weekend. Um, Deerfield Academy had put in a lovely um, skating rink and had a food truck, so, you know, so every Friday they, we had an inspection. You have a pre-inspection, you have another inspection. It's different than our restaurants. Our restaurants you do a couple times a year. Um, unless you have problems, then you go back and, you know, both of us go to witness, a, you know, a problematic situation. And we, until it's resolved, we keep re-inspecting. Um, and, of course, we charge every time. But in a, the food truck situation, this is all new. This is a new business model that's <clears throat> happening at Berkshire Brew. Um, and every time a food truck leaves and comes back, you do a pre-inspection and then uh, a re-inspection on that day. And the reason why is because sanitation, the cleaning of, of the unit, plus your food temperatures, whether it's freezing or heating, um, is really critical. And so you have to observe and make sure that it is safe, because food safety, of course, is number one. So we have this food truck model that is brand new and is a huge workload. So, um, for example, totally we collected fees last year in septic about $6,500, and, and, and then our food restaurant inspections were $9,035. This year to date, which is only April, we've collected septic is $12,750, and then um, our other restaurant kind of fees is $12,305. We will again review our fee schedule in the fall to make sure that we're covering our activities. Most of our activities are covered with fees. However, housing expenses and COVID related complaints and that kind of thing, there isn't any money. So um, we don't necessarily break even, but we try to get cover our expenses as best we can. Wow. Thank, th thank you for a very, very, very comprehensive, and uh, apparently you've been doing this for free, and we're going to miss you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm still yeah. around. Uh, <laughs> we actually even have a, a little more info for you. Oh, the town administrator asked to speak, so. 
this also covers more than one position, sir. Yeah. So you have two part-time positions, three part-time <coughs> positions, and the Board of Health agent position, which is several more hours, as Ms. Shores said. So it said. used to be one, and now it's three? Is that? It actually used to be one alternate and a health agent, and now we're, there's, we've, re we've restructured a couple of so, other budgets. So if you have more people, it's more mm -hmm. money. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For, uh, you can You're release welcome. the hold. Thank you, sir. Your, uh, I appreciate it. Nice to see you. May I, may I believe that was the last of the holds, so, uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. I don't want to defend this because I was arguing against this line item for ages, but I also want to point out that the Board of Health expense, the next line item down, the visiting nurse used to be on that line because it was a contract. It's now a hired position, so that's moved up to this line, so the whatever 20000 drop there moved up one line. Yes, uh, we have 25,000 additional nurse hours under the Board of Health salary, whereas it was dropped in the Board of Health expense. And the reason why is we, uh, we have coverage through a grant. We have actually two grants and potentially three multi-year grants that will allow us to have a lot more hours. Um, our senior center is very exciting. We'll have 12 hours actually at the senior center covering our nurse hours and then we'll um, have uh, COVID nurse hours as well as your regular, um, you know, disease that we have to report as, you know, like um, Lyme disease or, you know, some kind of geria, um, just, just anything that's reportable, we are covered under the grant now. So um, it actually, we're getting a lot more services for less money. So that removed all the holds. So now if there's just any general discussion on the budget before we vote on it, any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor of the budget as presented? Opposed? Motion carries. Yes. Okay, I move the town appropriate $16,708,930 to fund the accepted uh, amounts voted and to meet this appropriation transfer 65000 from the South County EMS Enterprise Fund, $6,700 from the uh, uh, South County Senior Center Fund, $69,000 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund, $5,984 from receipts received from debt, $8,500 from the uh, Cemetery Revolving Fund and $38,809 from free cash to, and raise and appropriate $16,514,937. Second. Essentially, you passed the budget, and now we have to pay for it. So, yeah. uh, so this article explains where the funds will come from in order to, uh, to fund the budget you just passed. So all those in favor, is there any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? If I could carries. make one note on that, Dan. I'd just like to point out that the Franklin County assessment went up a fair amount, but I think it's very encouraging to see our youth getting into the trades. Uh, we had 18 students before. We now have 29 going to Franklin Tech, uh, which is a very positive thing, I feel, uh, especially if any of you in here have tried to hire a plumber, electrician, or a carpenter. So that's... Uh, it's very encouraging, I think, so. Article 9, Mr. Wolfram. Okay. Got to flip my pages here. I move the town appropriate $45,094 pursuant to general law, Chapter 150E, Section 7, sufficient and included in the ominous budget to fund the Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IUPA, AFL, CIO, Collective Bargaining Agreement, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2022. Second. Mr. Wolfram, if you could briefly explain. Uh, uh, we've been in negotiations with the, uh, the police union and uh, I think we're pretty close to being ratified now. And the, this is the increase of the budget for the, uh, the salaries on the uh, union members. Uh, it brings them up closer to what the area it is. It doesn't actually exceed the amounts, but it does bring them closer. 
Uh, and uh, as the board, we looked at it and we felt for this three year contract, it, would, it was appropriate to make steps throughout the next three years to make it competitive. Um, those of you that don't realize this, we've got one of the best police departments in Massachusetts. Uh, it, uh, the downside to that is state police, ATF, Secret Service, everybody wants our guys. Mm -hmm. So, it, uh, so we try to make it economical to keep them here. <laughs> so, thank you. Any questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 10, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town vote to appropriate. $1,774,240 for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022 to fund the Sewer Wastewater Treatment Enterprise Fund as presented in this guide. Second. Mr. McDaniel, briefly. So this is, this is uh, the fund, uh, our sewer is run um, uh, with an enterprise fund, much like the South County EMS. Um, so we, we take in user fees. We have, obviously, we'll talk more about it a little later, but we have, um, uh, projects going on and this is to uh, fund we take money from retained <laughs> earnings sewer user fees and investment income to pay for the expenses that we have such as debt service and operating expenses and salary and this was approved by the Finance Committee and also the Capital Improvement Committee yes is there any questions or discussion okay all those in favor opposed the motion carries as well Article 11, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town raise and appropriate $3 million to pay for the cost of upgrading the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility and uh, appurtenances there, thereto including but not limited to planning, design, permitting, bidding, and construction as well as all other costs incidental and related thereto and to meet this, set, uh, this appropriation to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow said sum under general law, chapter 44, or any other enabling authority to issue bonds or notes of the town upon such terms as the treasurer and the select board shall determine and further provided that said appropriation shall be subject and contingent upon an affirmation vote of the town to <coughs> exempt the amounts required for the payments of interest and principal on said borrowing from the limitations on taxes imposed by general law chapter C, uh, General Law Chapters 59, Section 21C, pro uh, Proposition 2 and a half. Mr. McDaniel? So uh, this is uh, to raise the funds we need to finish the South Deerfield plant. Um, all that maybe have been aware and following, we've been working on um, the wastewater treatment plant in South Deerfield and the pipes um, in town to uh, to bring them up to speed in 2019, we asked for an appropriation of 19 million to start um, the work at the plant. Um, and in four years, the world is, has really changed as far as what we had hoped to have for uh, the projects we wanted to complete with that funding at that time. It's been a real struggle. I mean, um, you all kind of recognize everything. If we if we were going to do the same project we hoped to do in 2019, the cost for inflation and um, due to supply shortages and everything else, the, it would have raised about 30, 34 percent in just that short amount of time. In the last two years alone, we've had in non-residential construction uh, inflation of 19 percent. So it's, it's really taken a toll on the project that we wanted to complete. So uh, the sewer user, uh, the sewer committee working group, um, select board and our, our engineers and the contractors and uh, finance committee members, we've all gotten together and really worked hard to try and find ways to um, s um, adjust that, that the projects that we wanted to do. Um, the main, our main focus is to meet permit, and we're putting in a fantastic headworks building to try and clean the sewer stream, get all the rags and everything out of that. All of that's going well. We have um, our, our clarifier updated. We've got a secondary clarifier going in. Um, <clears throat> Because of the cost of the bids that have come in and the amount of, the amount that it takes to do, we've slimmed back. We've pulled some phase, uh, some items from phase two into phase one, 
and we've, um, we've put some things on hold, and really the second phase is to finish out the project by um, taking care of the aeration tanks. That's one of the second, that's kind of the lungs of the project. The first phase had been all the heart, like all the stuff coming into the system, making sure that's clean and working well, and, cl and clarity when it goes out, but really it's, the, it's managing the bugs and uh, balancing the, the, the BOD load and the oxygen <coughs> in that to make sure that you're getting a clear um, you know, clear, clear liquids out to the clarifier to settle and then out, out to the plant. So we hate to be back here asking for this. I mean, it's not what we had hoped um, four years ago, but, but it is reality. So we feel um, certain things we're going to put on hold, but the things that are going to meet permit, we, we really think it's the most important thing to do. I'll just add one more thing to this is that we have a fantastic contractor right now. Uh, Waterline Industries has been amazing to work with. They're efficient very few change orders and, and the change orders we've had have sometimes been in the savings. I mean, so we really have not had to spend much of our, um, our, uh, you know, the money you set aside in case something goes wrong. That we hope to use with some change orders. The whole idea is to fund this now because we want to hang on to that contractor. We won't have to pay for mobilization of another contractor if these guys bid on. We're going to do some of the work with a change order to finish out the 19 million that we have appropriated. This additional three, we're hoping that he will bid on it uh, because of economy of scale and he's there already. We'll get a very good bid um, on doing the, the rest of the work that we feel needs to be done. So it's complicated. It's a large project. I'm happy to talk to anybody with any questions, but it's hard to fit in a four page memo and, and say here in a few minutes, but um, we're working hard to try to do the right thing at that plant. And we still have, you know, we still have another plant to worry about and the pipes in the ground, but we feel like once this plant is up, up and running in the next couple of years, we'll be in really good shape to handle whatever we do in the future. If anyone would like to speak, then come down to the mic. Again, if you can just state your name, your street, and welcome. Hello, Julie Cavaco from North Hillside Road. I just want to take this opportunity to tell everyone who's on the sewer system to stop using all the things that have ruined the sewer system because the rest of us in the world who are in septic systems also have to pay for our septic work and right. the errors of your ways. So thank you so much for paying attention to the little flyers that went out. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Bruce St. Peter's Snowberry Circle. Um, I had a question. I'm not, I fully support this because I was involved in it uh, when they had a sewer committee and so forth. But I guess my question kind of goes back to the previous page, which kind of ties in with this one, is um, I noticed the $3 million you're taking out is a 20 year, and I understand most of the bond for the sewer is going, then what is this 20 years, 3% interest on a previous page? I'm not sure what that is. Mr. McDaniel? Um, so we, we haven't um, selected a funding uh, mechanism for the three million, the additional three million dollars yet. I'm not sure what you're referring to there, but uh, you can show me. Yeah, and I could try to answer. But oh, 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 yeah. So that um, that is per that would be proposed. Those haven't been settled yet. So um, the right that yeah on the sewer use chart. Let me just take a peek at that a second. Yes, it just, it's a hypothetical. If we took out a 20-year note at 3% interest, we haven't done that, and our rates have been much better. They've been in the, like, the 1 and 3 eighths range, um, but rates are rising a little bit. This was just to kind of illustrate that um, our sewer rate right now is 1638. Right. <clears throat> we wanted to kind of give people an idea. If we went out and took a, worst-case scenario, a 20-year note for 3%, what what your sewer rate would be if we if we did that and that's about um that would be about 1860 would be the rate but we would we 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 think we'd have to be there in um 2024 but uh we're we're looking to get a better rate than that and and, and really working with um we hope to get a, another loan from usda which is more of a 40-year note so so all of that wouldn't hit right in the first year um and so we haven't selected how we're going to pay for that yet. This was an example of 
one way that you could pay for that. So the intention is hopefully to roll this into the 40-year note. Yes, in the, yes. In the long range plan. And the way USDA does it, they actually give a secondary loan. So we're looking at that. We're actually, frankly, I mean, if everybody can get on the phone with the representatives, it's, yes. it's embarrassing that you've had billions of dollars in federal funding set out for infrastructure, right? We heard all about that. The, the, the governor in, in Massachusetts put out a bill of uh, $9 billion. Not a penny is coming to Western Massachusetts. So I'm furious with, with the federal government and our state government. We need money in this town. We're doing shovel-ready jobs right now that we're on the backs of our sewer users and our taxpayers, and zero money coming yeah. down from the federal government's based on the infrastructure, billions of dollars of infrastructure that got sent out this last year. It's embarrassing, it's frustrating, it's a scandal. There should be money, and if anybody can make a call to, to their representatives, we need help. I mean, it's just, it, it's just not fair. Thank you all for working on this. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Jeff Upton, Hillcrest Ave. And uh, I was involved with this also for several years, and I support it. I think things are going great, and I understand the ask on the three million with Thank the you. costs and that. Uh, but in years past, as we discussed several times, I know where this is going. <laughs> I'm here to ask: is an opportunity for the septic tank users? to be incorporated into this plant where septic tanks, when they're pumped, the residents have a place to dispose yep. in our plant. So and the, I'm wondering if that's <clears throat> included, and if not, in what phase will that be included? So that's a hard question, because it sounds really easy, like, yes, you'd want to do this. And I'd mm -hmm. want to just sit here and say, yes, we're going to have a port where you can just back up, or Greg's can back up and just <coughs> unload into the plant. But when I've talked to our engineers, the cost to put that infrastructure in, because that, you, when, we, when the stuff comes out of the houses, it travels and it gets mixed with rainwater and all kinds of stuff. So the, the potency when it gets to the plant is a lot less than if you just drop the truck from, from Greg. So, there would be extensive cost to put in the infrastructure to kind of dilute that, to bring it in. It is an expense that we can certainly do. We haven't put it into the budget to do that yet because we've had to cut out a lot of other stuff to get this done. But, I mean, it's really up to the town's folks. If they want to spend that money to do it, I'm open to doing it. I know the plant will be able to take that when it gets uh, done. It's just, a, it's just another expense that we have to decide is it worth doing, Well, honestly. Mike and I appreciate that. My mm -hmm. concern is uh, over the years here, uh, the town has run into situation where they have difficulty of <clears throat> unloading this Absolutely. as far as their sludge. Yep. Where to bring it? Well, anybody that's been getting their septic tanks pumped recently Get are finding beat. out that <coughs> the, the pumping is the yes. easy part as right. far as the cost. It's the disposal. It's the disposal mm -hmm. that is increasing. Yep. And we as septic system owners are going to be running into the same situation that the town is. Where do we get rid of this? Right. It's because, harder and harder. Because the, the uh, businesses that are pumping tanks, they're running into the same thing that the town is. They're they having are. a hard time. In fact, they're being, being allocated X amount of gallons per. Yes. And so it really does. It's going to put a burden on all the septic tank owners also in and town at some place. And it, so it, is thinking, the and it is on the list. And they're and they're paying in. Like that, you know, even even though if you have a septic, you're paying a twenty five percent of this charge. So yes, right. we looked at like can we do this? Um, right. so I, I do think it's a valid thing to keep after. We, and it is much more difficult for people to unload. And I've been talking with Joe Comerford. We had a we had a sewer kind of summit, maybe two falls ago. Where I asked her for another one la a couple weekends ago, to really address this because all the all the Gregs, anybody that's pumping Bossley, they're all having trouble finding a place to unload because of the, you know, the kind of the, the level of stuff that they're 
that they're getting rid of. So I'll well, keep looking at it, Jeff. I definitely will. And, and we, we will. appreciate that. As it's, long as we're not forgotten. It's on the list. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, come on down. And if we can just direct everything here, sure. that's great. Just as a quick thought, in the past, we've had some good luck getting things as a region. Is there any chance to look at this issue regionally yes. to try to tap some of that money for a regional solution? We, yes, we, we have definitely been trying. working on this yeah, great, great all comment, the time. For sure. Any other discussion? Yes, down to the mic. That's okay. Come on down to the mic, please. It's being broadcast, so can't hear you in our living room. She lives in the living. She has to be loud. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Diane Gripko, Brayburn Road. Any estimate on how many years this upgrade in this system will be good for? Typically, you, when you do a, a project like this commercial project, they figure about 40 to 50 years. Okay. Yeah, we'll be, it's a cycle. It's an awful cycle because okay. we still have the old Deerfield plant to work on as well. But typically, when you do a project like that, it's, it's a, you know, it was 1970 when it went in, so mm -hmm. good 50 years. Come with any warranties? Uh, yeah, there are some warranties on the <laughs> clarifiers and different pipes and things like that, for sure. But. Not quite 50 years, but okay. there are some. Right. some Thank, you. Thank you. Climate resiliency is also being built in. Any other discussion? Oh, this is a two-thirds vote, so if we can just hold our cards up a little bit longer. So all those in favor? <coughs> Opposed? And the motion does carry by a two-thirds majority. Thank you all so much. We're grateful. Article 12, Ms. Shores Ness. Article 12, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town vote to appropriate the sum of $1,416,117 and to transfer from free cash the sum of $345,693 to fund the South County Emergency Medical Service Enterprise Fund for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022 and to meet the town of Deerfield's allocated share of costs as follows. Second. Ms. Shores Ness, briefly. This just covers the, uh, our portion of the operational costs of the South County EMS that is not um, covered by a revenue raised um, through billing. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 13, Mr. McDaniel, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that we pass over this article. This is um, the we project. Second. We can just get a second on that? Yes. Second. Go ahead. The, the select board um, has voted to use our ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act money, to our first uh, portion to uh, fund the capital projects listed. All those in favor of passing over the article? Opposed? That article is passed over. Article 14, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $152,700 to fund the capital improvement projects for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022, as presented in this guide. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. These projects are um, from the Capital Improvement Committee that were prioritized as safety and operational issues um, that we are funding for this coming year. Does the Capital Improvement Committee have any input or was recommended favorably by them? Um, as, as a member of the Capital Improvement Committee, I, uh, we voted to recommend, we prioritized and voted to recommend this projects. Thank you. Discussion, questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 15, Mr. Wolfram? I move that the town meeting pass over this article. Second. Uh, all those in favor of passing over the article? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 16, Mr. McDaniel? I move that the town take 
$36,727.47 from free cash to fund Deerfield's allocation of the cost to replace the walk-in cooler at Frontier Regional School District, as referenced in this article. Mr. McDaniel? So this is to, uh, get pretty self-explanatory, but, but, but to replace the uh, walk-in cooler that is in sorely need of, of replacement to make sure we keep the food nice and cool and kids safe. It's our, our portion of that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Article 17, Mr. Hilchi. Hilchi, I'm the chair of the uh, Community Preservation Committee, or CPC. I just wanted to briefly explain that the CPC is responsible for reviewing applications <coughs> to ensure that proposed projects meet the eligibility criteria for funding outlined in the Community Preservation Act. Once proposals have been vetted, those that are eligible are recommended for inclusion on the town meeting warrant, and town voters decide whether or not to approve individual project proposals. Projects are only eligible for CPA funding if they fit into one of four categories. Open space, acquiring open space for public use. Historic preservation, recreation, like making ball fields and, and so forth. And community housing. In the most recent full year, Deerfield raised $250,000 locally, and the state sent the town an additional $250,000 in CPA matching funds for a 100% match. Article 17, um, I move that the town appropriate 475,000 for phase one of the rehabilitation of the old grammar school building, ex senior center into a new town hall and to meet said appropriation, transfer $160,200 from the Community Pres Preservation Fund 2023 estimated revenues, 29,550 from the reserve for historic resources and $285,250 from the undesignated fund balance, all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Deerfield Select Board and approved by the Community Preservation Committee with the following stipulations. All interior and exterior work shall comply with the Secretary of Interior standards for re rehabilitation of historic pro properties. An independent historic preservation consultant shall be hired at the beginning of phase one and participate in all facets of phase one to ensure compliance with the Secretary of the Interior standards. Any federal or state money, American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA money designated by the select board, if any, or other funds received for use on this project shall be the funds of first resort and payments with CPA funds to be tapped after all other monies have been exhausted. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the select board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Second. <coughs> Mr. Hilchey, do you have any comment on that particular motion or? Um, I believe that the uh, select board and uh, the finance committee chair were the people who brought this to the CPA, so they would be the appropriate people to answer questions about the project itself. Does finance or select board like to briefly comment? Um, to start with, though, uh, this is not my role as finance committee. I brought this forward as my role as town building advisory committee, so this is not a finance committee opinion. Um, the town building advisory committee a couple years ago did a survey of town residents asking for feedback and opinions on town buildings, and there were three very consistent themes that came out of that survey. One was a desire for improved town services. Second was a desire to preserve historical buildings in town. And third was a concern over increasing taxes. And these at first seem contradictory, but in my opinion, this one project allows you to meet all three of those. We're, we're repairing a historical building, refurbishing and making it new again and usable. We're improving town services by providing a, a good building for town office. and since CPA funds can only be used for the restricted purposes that Tim Hilchey mentioned, um, this is one of those uses. These funds can't be used for other things, so we can do this project without raising town taxes at all. Um, so I think it's fairly strong arguments for doing the project. Um, what this project is, this is the first phase of the project. 
these funds will go towards um, accomplishing sort of the exploration, feasibility, schematic design, surveys, all that kind of stuff that's required to fully define the project, create drawings, come up with a solid <coughs> cost estimate, and do the beginnings of the actual construction drawings. Um, we will come back a year from now, I hope, um, with a phase two proposal that um, would then go ahead and do the actual refurbishment of the building. Any discussion? Yes, we can just come down to the mic. Lisa Middens, 80 North Main Street. Um, my question is not about uh, restoring the old senior center building, the old grammar school building. That seems like a really valuable thing for me to to me to do. I'm not just confused about what happens to the seniors and the senior center, and and I wasn't aware that there was a real problem with the town hall building. And why do we need a new town hall? And why isn't the senior center piece more of a priority in this? Mr. McDaniel. Well, so to answer that, um, so the building that is currently the, was the senior center that we're talking about remodeling, really isn't designed well for a senior center. There's no ground floor. There's, it's not really, um, it doesn't have the right space for, and we're, we're in the middle of doing a needs assessment and survey on what the seniors need, what kind of space would be required, um, and, and our, town, our town hall building isn't really, you know, it's not a good, you know, it's been repurposed many years ago into a town hall from a school. If you ever work there or spend any time there, it's extremely hot and extremely cold, very inefficient. The acoustics are awful. There's not enough room. Um, we're always trying to find a place to put somebody. There's no rooms for, for meetings. Um, it just doesn't really serve the purpose of the town going forward. And the thought was to look at this building we may find that this isn't the right building for the town hall, but I think this is, it is a building worth saving and it's a building worth looking at that we could put town hall into it. And, um, it, and we'll look at that. Do we need to add on to it? Is there, um, there's a lot of work left to go to kind of, as, as Julie said, the work is to really flush out design plan where offices would go. Is there enough space? All of that, but we do think it's valuable to save the building. We are also working on trying to secure grants to, to possibly put an addition on for a three-town senior center. We've been lobbying, again, call your legislature, zero money coming to Western Mass for infrastructure projects. Really, really frustrating. But we've been talking with our state, you know, legislatures and, and, and federal um, representatives to try and find ways to pull that off. In the meantime, uh, there's an article at one point we passed over was, rehabbing the church building it's next to the library and that is going on this year to uh, have a space for our seniors to be until we can flush out a, a good space for them so there's a lot of moving parts and it's not easily kind of laid out in a easy sentence but it's kind so of where we're going potentially the old grammar school could have an extension built mm -hmm. onto it for a senior it could. for a senior center yes yes yep that's that's the that's one okay. of the visions at the moment yep thank you any other comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Hilchey? <coughs> I move that the town appropriate $11,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2023 estimated revenues, a 5% local match for a Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources grant of $209,000 to create an agricultural preservation restriction on a 12.4 acre farm parcel identified in the assessor's records as map 149 lot 6, all in a manner consistent with the proposals submitted by the Deerfield Select Board and approved by the Community Preservation Committee. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Any comment on that or someone from the APR? Could you just tell us where it is? There's no picture of the map in the warrant. So this piece of property is um, off Set Right Road uh, and 
it's uh, contiguous with another parcel that I believe was preserved last year, smaller parcel, and uh, so you can see it from 116 as you head towards Conway. It, it's prime that. soils. It's about the top 5% soils in the world. It's worth saving. Yep. Part of the Ostrowski firm. Yes. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Mr. Hilchey. I move that the town appropriate $350,000 for the Town Common Rehabil Rehabilitation and Restoration Project request and to meet said appropriation, transfer $200,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2023 estimated revenues and $150,000 from the undesignated fund balance, all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Ad Hoc Town Common Committee and approved by the Community Preservation Committee with the stipulation that any federal or state money American Rescue Plan Act ARPA money designated by the select board, if any, or other funds received for use on this project shall be the funds of first resort in payments, with CPA funds to be tapped after all other monies have been exhausted. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the select board, and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Any comment, Mr. Ilchi, or anyone opponent of the application? Any questions or discussion? Yes, come forward, please. Hello. Diane Gripko, Braeburn Road. I just wondered about what the time frame is for the project of the town common. I was part of a, a Zoom meeting of, you know, a few months ago, and I really questioned the design mm -hmm. for the, the, you know, I know it's kind of a rendition, a proposal, but it doesn't seem to fit that area. It's a very tiny common, mm -hmm. and when I looked at the proposed rendition, I'm like, that's not gonna fit the common. So I guess my question is, is there a final design? Do we get to see it? Do we get to review it? I know there were comments that people hate the fountain. Well, I love the fountain. <laughs> I love the common. We do I mean, too. We love it too. Well, but the design that they showed was not our fountain. And yeah. it was a more modern design. And yeah. for people that are looking and have spent tons of money to keep the rural and, you know, old time character, to bring in a modern version of a fountain, I don't think works for South Deerfield. So, uh, Mr. McDaniel? So it's my question. Yeah. What's the process <laughs> once the funds are allocated, approved? You know, yep. the final say and the yeah, final we, design, that's more my question. Yeah, we do have a lot of work still left to do if, if funded, um, and it isn't a final design. We're taking people's comments and input. We aren't removing the fountain. The only thing we were oh, looking goodness. to do is keep that. We're going to keep the stones and the historical aspect of the fountain, but we wanted to kind of lower the depth a little bit to make sure it was a little safer in case kids fall in it. Um, and then to, to make um, seating areas around it. I think the main thing, I've been on the town common committee when, when we first started this with Jane Trujero years ago, um, and it was really, the, the thing that set it in motion was when we had the um, Memorial Day service, Faye Bardwell was, was our, our you know, speaker every year, and he had the hardest time just walking across the crosswalk to stand up, I mean, almost fell down a couple of times. The, the, cro the crosswalks or sidewalks on the park are very old, they're not ADA compliant. We have crosswalks that lead to no place right. on the common at all. So there is some modernization of the downtown that we want to make it more ADA compliant and safer and smoother places to, um, to, to sit and, and get new benches. And, but I, I do, we are still taking public comment. There will be a final revision. Okay. And um, I, I, we just want as much public input as we can. We can't please everybody. The overlay will fit. The plan we have will fit. There'll be a couple of feet that will edge out towards right. Cumberland Farms, but not, I mean, we're talking a foot or two, just because that's the layout. You know, that, <clears throat> that common's been there for hundreds of years, and the way the roads have been paved over time, they've kind of taken some of the common and left some of the common, so we were just kind of taking what was really the boundaries of the common. Um, at some point, we'd love to expand it at some point. You know, you go well, to many towns in their big areas, but well, we're not going there. I mean, but it's not South Deerfield, and I it's appreciate not. what you're saying. Yep. And, I mean, I've said before, even on the Zoom meeting, I literally go by, I would say, 100 times a yeah. week, 
You do. But I mean, I live in the center of town because I'm driving. I am always going by the common, probably more than anybody. And you've done so and much I work see, over the years. Well, that's the women's club in that. Yeah. And, you know, and part of the reason I do it, because I drive by it so much. Mm -hmm. But there are always people on the common. Yep. I can appreciate the fact that the updates, and I appreciate the work that the committee has done to improve it. Yep. But I guess my point is, is I like the overall character of mm -hmm. it. Yep. And I understand, you know, evening out sidewalks and doing whatever. And they talk about the benches, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of older people and literally tons of people that go and sit on those benches just yep. the way they are. Yeah, there was a group though. of bicyclists. You know, yeah. I think there was maybe eight to 10 bicyclists. So it is a stopping point. It is. And it's a beautiful area. We love it. You know, right. So I just don't want to see it change too much is my point. I hear or you. I want to at least give the townspeople the opportunity to see how much they really want to change. For sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion before you? You know, uh, Mr. Wolf, from briefly. The, uh, for some of you who don't know, the, uh, the fountain is actually an essential part of the uh, South Deerfield Water District. Uh, to keep the water flowing through the pipes. So it, uh, that's something that has to be taken into consideration. And, you know, born and raised here, you know, uh, I can say I've never fell into that fountain. <laughs> well, it uh, depends. I, I, I can let you know, though, that my twin brother and I would jump into the fountain and get some coins and either head to Billy's or Billings. Oh, man. So, Moving on. We were a little mischievous at the time, so, but, uh, you know, it's an essential part. It's it's a beautiful, um, yes, we want to do a lot to improve the looks of the center of South Deerfield. So. All those in favor of the motion as presented. Thank you. Opposed? That motion carries. Mr. Hilchi. I move that the town appropriate $30,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2023 estimated revenues for the subsidized senior housing feasibility study request, all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the ad hoc senior housing committee and approved by the community preservation committee, said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the select board and any unused funds to be returned to the community preservation fund as required by statute. Second. Is there anyone here from the ad hoc senior housing committee that wish to be heard? Yes, if you come up to the mic. Yes, Anna Lee Wolf, Cool Four Mountain Road, South Deerfield. Um, I'm on the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee, and um, <coughs> there will be two allocations for this money. The first is to look at a feasibility study to determine the best place for uh, senior housing, and this would be subsidized senior housing that would be taxable and, and part of our tax rules, so that's good. Um, and the second part of the allocation would be to fund the survey that will document the need and demand for senior housing. We've certainly had many um, <clears throat> informal requests and also the Deerfield demographics show that there is a need for senior housing. But um, in order to receive funding uh, from a number of funding sources, we need to be able to have these, these studies. And so um, I do hope you can support it. And also I think uh, many of you received uh, postcards in the mail for a, uh, a senior housing um, survey, so please fill out your survey. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Shores, now the job. Um, I just was going to speak because uh, Lily, our chair, is, is not here. She's out of town. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, come on down to the mic. Hello. Jennifer Remillard, Conway Street. I'm also on the Senior Ad Hoc Committee or senior housing. Um, I believe this $30,000 is also coming from the appropriated $50,000 or $500,000 that was already put aside, voted on last year at annual town meeting. No. 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 Okay. Sorry. Yes, Mr. Russo. I'm all in support of it. My only comment is we probably have three older sewage studies that are sitting on shelves in town hall somewhere. <laughs> We've got older studies of personnel committee that have been sitting on shelves. All I ask is that the committee involved in this stay involved with the people doing this and make sure you get what you want out of it, 
not that we're here in 10 years asking for this all over again. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. Matt, Matt, just having gone to meetings for over 20 years, we are never turning it over again. <laughs> We've learned three times. We will have senior housing this time. Yeah. Any, <laughs> any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Hilchey. I move that the town appropriate $15,000. Well, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm ahead of myself here. Sorry about that. I move that the town appropriate $800 from the Community Preservation Fund 2023 estimated revenues for the preservation of 18th and 19th century books of the Ware and Williams families, all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Comtuck Valley Memorial Association and approved by the Community Preservation Committee. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the select board and any unused funds to be returned to the community preservation fund as required by statute. Second. And I'm not sure if Mr. Nove could speak about this just to Mr. Nove, would you like to speak? Or? I would like to get the job, so I should be fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, essentially what it is is these are um, actual uh, physical records of these important families in Deerfield history, and there will be restoration work to preserve them and to uh, store them in the climate appropriate rooms and uh, you know to also uh, be able to use them for research in, in, in town histories and so forth. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Hilchey. <coughs> okay. I move that the town transfer $13,000 of Community Preservation Fund 2023 estimated revenues for the reserve for community housing. General Law Chapter 40, uh, 44B requires that a minimum of 10% of estimated revenues be used or set aside for community housing. Second. Mr. Hilchey, essentially under the statute, I, my understanding <coughs> is you're required to put certain amounts into certain categories if you don't award them. That's that, correct. And that's since, the nature since, of this motion? Yes, and since we are, uh, we have just approved thirty thousand from the forty-three thousand dollars set aside, the remainder is thirteen thousand. So that's statutorily required. All those in favor? Are there any discussion? All those in favor? I apologize. <laughs> There's some discussion. Um, anyone opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Ilchi. I move that the town appropriate $15,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2023 estimated revenues for Community Preservation Committee administrative expenses. Second. These are, uh, this is an annual event. We, we're allowed under statute to put, a, put in 5% for administrative expenses. We seldom use them, but um, occasionally there, a need arises. Uh, this, le this past year, uh, we were looking to potentially hire uh, a grant writer for, to help fund some of the work that we are now um, going to be doing for the old grammar school project. Um, and we would have used those administrative funds to pay for that expense. Um, and if we don't use these, uh, they go back into each year, any money that's not expended goes back into the un undesignated fund and we make another request in the following year. Discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries as well. <coughs> Mr. Hilchey? Uh, taking over the meeting. Okay, final motion. I move that the town extend the community preservation grant funding period for the Indian House and Bloody Brook Tavern Rehabil Rehabilitation and Restoration Project Phase 2 by an additional year to allow for completion of the project in 2023. Second. Just briefly, if you can explain the extension. Sure. Um, this project uh, is substantially finished, but um, due to COVID-19 interruptions, <coughs> the Mass Historical Commission has not completed the final evaluation of the project, so this extension request of the grant is intended to allow additional time for MHC to complete their evaluation, and it's recommended by the Finance Committee. And so when it was initially awarded, it was for three years, and those three years are up, so you're asking for that extension. That's uh, correct. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? 
That motion carries. Mr. McDaniel, Article 19. Oh, that's you, Dave. Yeah. Yep. I move that the oh. town vote to apply the proceeds from the sale of land to the indebtedness of incurred in acquiring such parcels of land in accordance with General Law Chapter 44, Section 63. Parcels in the front, um, the assessor's map is uh, 168, Lot 21, shown as parcel 2 1, consisting of approximately 7.971 acres and parcel 2-2 consisting of approximately 0.924 acres. On the subdivided site plan, the plan recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds of Plan Book 138, page 7, dated October 21st, 2020, upon receipt of the funds. Second. Mr. Wolfram. Um, this is authorizing the, uh, the town to basically accept the money when they were paid for the land. Uh, the, yep. Is there a quick description where the land is? Oxford. What was that? It's, it's is there a Oxford. quick description of where the land is? In uh, this is the old Oxford uh, pickle shop property next to the, uh, um, the highway garage. And it's, uh, we uh, currently have a contract, a purchase and sale on that property. And we're just waiting for the 21C to be completed, right? environmental testing that the pr prospective owner would like to complete. Mm -hmm. So if we were, if town meeting approves this, this would allow us to pay the note that the town took off once the proceeds come in. Any discussion? <coughs> yes, we can down to the mic. Hi, I'm Kip Camosa. I live on Greenfield Road. What is the amount of the proceeds from the sale? From the purchase and sale, Lydia? Four. <coughs> two cars. Four. Is that Sorry, Trevor's looking at me funny. Um, it is upwards of $100,000. $100,000 no. for the eight acres? Above the three hundred and eighty, the 358000 that the town paid <coughs> for the ban, paid to repurchase the land. So, so it's a little over $100,000 the town could recoup above what they paid. So we're selling the, the property for approximately $480,000. Oh, that was my, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 20, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town vote to allow the select board to submit a home rule petition as set forth in the warrant. Second. Mr. McDaniel, if you can uh, briefly summarize. Do you want me to explain? Okay. So, um, <laughs> so uh, for many years, the town has had uh, one position that was created by the legislature that um, was the town clerk, treasurer, and tax collector all under one person. Um, Many years back, we asked the legislator, legislature to allow us to, that to be an appointed position. So we have to go back to the legislature and ask them to split that. We're, 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 Deerfield is one of only two towns in the state that actually have all three positions under one job. Um, so it's very hard to hire somebody. When, when um, Barb left, Barb Hancock used to be our person that did all that, wonderful person, uh, moved on to other jobs. and. Um, endeavors and so we, we're left trying to hire somebody to do that but there's really nobody out in the in the marketplace that does all three of those jobs so we really w took this time to kind of think about how we would restructure the offices and split the town clerk apart from the treasurer collector and so that's really what we're asking the legislature to do is to um, to, to allow us that ability to split those two jobs so we could then hire uh, two people um, because the jobs have changed immensely over the years, and um, one would be more of a, a part-time position as clerk and more of a full-time position as the treasurer collector. Any questions or discussion? I would like to compliment, uh, since Barb has left, um, Sarah and Jen have done an excellent job in running that office. Woo! Uh, it's, 
you know, as a select board, it's been almost a seamless transition, uh, which is very good to see when you're trying to run a town and making sure everything is running the way it's supposed to. So uh, two very capable people, and actually we have three very capable mm. people in that office, which is a very tight space why we need more room for a bigger town office, but <laughs> uh, that's another story. <laughs> so. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 21, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town vote to accept the provisions of Mass General <coughs> Laws, Chapter 90, Section 17C, to allow the select board to establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour in all areas in town defined by the state law as the thick, thickly settled or business district that are not a state highway. Second. Um, basically, this is to ad address the complaint, speeding complaints that the police department uh, receives and for uh, allow us as a select board to um, lower the speed limits. Yes. <laughs> Any discussion? Mr. Ilchi. I just wondered if uh, either the chief or one of the select board members could explain roughly which streets we would be affecting this change on. Chief, would you like to address that or? Hi, good evening everybody. I'll kind of stand a little awkward with the mic. I do get a lot of complaints town wide on streets. One of the recent ones is North Hillside, South Main, North Main, Stillwater, South Mill River Road. How much time do you have? <laughs> So traditionally what is required under Mass General Law was we were to go out and do a speed study. And when we did a speed study, we would average out those numbers at the end of that speed study. We'd send them to the state and the state would certify that speed limit based on an average number. We know cars are created faster now, quieter, safer. So if we put an officer out there to do a speed study now, what you're gonna see naturally in your 30 mile an hour neighborhoods is a speed come back from the state certified at 35. That doesn't do any of us any value. Under the Municipal Modernization Act, about four years ago, the state heard from all across the Commonwealth complaints from mayors, town administrators, and select board members. This was one of the complaints they heard about it. So they allowed municipalities by town meeting vote to give the select board the authority to reduce those speed limits down for those narrow roads right down to 25 miles an hour. So I strongly support this. Thank you. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 22, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town meeting pass over this article. Second, somewhere? Second. Uh, it, uh, all those in favor of passing away the article? <laughs> Opposed? That article is passed over. Article 23 is a citizen's petition. <coughs> Hello. Uh, you do not need to read it. Nope, you can summarize it, but if you can just introduce yourself. Laurie Busada, North Main Street. So this article is coming to us this year, but has come before all of the other Franklin County towns in 2019 and 2020. Basically, the governor put forth a commission involving a lot of native peoples and historians to look at the flag and the image that it represents and come up with something that more reflects our relationship with native peoples currently. So just as we don't have flags that represent an adversarial relationship with the United States and England anymore, it seems like we need to modernize the relationship that the current <coughs> flag shows with native peoples. So the, the um, passing this resolution would just be telling the legislature that we want the work that started on this commission to carry, carry forth so that the, the work thus far doesn't get dropped. And so your motion is as presented in the, in the guide. Yes. Is there a second? second? 
Any discussion or questions on that? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, and before we wrap up, I just want to say a couple of thank yous. Uh, first, to FCAT, who uh, did another amazing job this evening. Thank you, Kevin. And it's also uh, just a quick acknowledgement of Chris Collins, who had uh, been our director of FCAT, that passed away far too young. He was a fellow moderator in Montague, and uh, he's, he's helped us for many years. So we, we thank him for his years as well. Um, the Finance Committee, we'll be having a few, uh, I'm understanding we'll, there are some appointments up this year and uh, people will not be coming back. So I do want to thank the committee as a whole and also uh, a few of those members who have given countless years to uh, the town of Deerfield. And it's a, uh, a difficult job and a thankless one often and I you have my appreciation. So. And with that, I hereby move that the meeting adjourn uh, to meet again in the polling places at the meeting room at the town offices at 8 Conway Street in the village of South Deerfield on Monday, the second day of May 2022 at 10 o'clock in the forenoon, then and there to act on the following articles, to choose all necessary town officers as uh, indicated within the guide. Uh, when we complete our town meeting, if we dissolve it, that's the end of it. So uh, in the case of the year of elections, we continue the meeting from today until election day, and it's adjourned thereafter. So that's kind of a procedural motion. All those in favor of the motion as described? Opposed? Thank you, everyone, for coming out and uh, getting back together in the auditorium again. So